My name is Michalis Bumas. I am a um, member of the Special Service for Strategy Planning and Evaluation Mission of Development uh, Investment, one of the six uh, authorities responsible for uh, the PA coordination. And I've got the pleasure to present uh, a panel of, ex of uh, distinguished uh, guests, panelists rather, uh, the, the, the most appropriate people to discuss uh, various aspects of the, the issue of, of the entrepreneurship issue, starting from my left, uh, and the order that you see them on the uh, agenda. We have called Mrs. Uh, Themis Avtihidou, Secretary General of Industry, Mr. Georgios Zervo, Special Secretary for the Management of the European Regional Development Fund and Cohesion Fund Programs, Mr. Padzelik Zorzakis, Executive Vice Chairman of the Hellenic Development Bank, Mr. Vasilios Korkidis, President of the Piraeus uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry and President of the Regional Council of uh, the Research and Development Chamber of Attica. Ms. Uh, Angela Greco, uh, President of the Greek National German Organization and Mr. Christianos Nyafas, Program Manager of the uh, European Commission, Director General for Regional and Urban Policy. We will start with some presentations that will be quite brief because we are running really late. I had prepared some uh, key words, some, some um, introduction. I'm not going to uh, uh, tell them now. And we're going to start with the Systemis of the Hidu, who's going to talk to us about uh, Industry 4 as a driver of industrial competitiveness and entrepreneurship. Yeah, I've got the floor, Secretary General. The microphone of the lady is not working and is echoing. So can you hear me now? Ask the lady. Yes, yeah, she can be heard. I'd like to start saying that I am very happy. Uh, today's event. We are kicking off these discussions uh, on development, uh, competitiveness and entrepreneurship. In essence, today's uh, conference seals the position of the Hellenic Republic on the approval of the new PA 2021-2027. We'll say a few things about uh, the Greek industry, the challenges, uh, the action pillars, uh, the actions or and operations uh, under the new PA, and a few words about Greece 2.0. Without further ado, let's uh, look at the date of the Greek industry. Let's see where we are and where we aim to be. Currently, the Greek industry contributes 10.7 of the gross added value, 2.8 of total employees, workers, and 9.2 of exposable SMEs, the backbone of the Greek manufacturing sector, make up 99.7% uh, of total businesses, 48%, they had 48, they contribute 48% of added value, and 75.4% uh, of employment. And we're saying this to highlight that despite the large number of SMEs, uh, one might expect that they wouldn't contribute enough to the macroeconomics of uh, the country. This is not true, macroeconomic fundamentals. Uh, so our country in the past couple of years, and earlier, 
has experienced a financial pandemic, healthcare, climate and energy crisis. The industry nonetheless has surprised us pleasantly. The Greek manufacturing sector has proved to be quite resilient and even better performance than the other EU member states. This makes us feel optimistic. Nonetheless, the Greek industry and Greek entrepreneurship at large will have to deal with three key challenges. First is the climate uh, challenge, uh, change. It's the crisis that will affect the entire globe and each and every business and household. The climate change has got a two-way relationship. And this is a two-way relationship. I believe I can't, you can't hear me well. Anyway, says lady, um, this is a two-way relationship because on the one hand, the climate is affected by the industry at large, by the industry at large, because of the gas emissions. At the same time, though, the industry is face, faces uh, weather phenomena and increased uh, regulatory requirements that it has to respond to. The second challenge is the digital transformation. All Greek businesses and the Greek economy at large needs to be digitally transformed. In the past, a company that introduced new technologies in which production was considered moderately innovative. Currently, the digital transformation and new technologies are essential ingredient and a necessity for the viability, sustainability of Greek businesses and this is undeniable. Thirdly, uh, as I said earlier, we have caught a uh, global crisis, a global unrest and upheaval, so we need to take actions for the resilience of uh, business, uh, the resilience of the industry, uh, as well as the, uh, the resilience of uh, small businesses. So when we design the priorities and while we will be designing the actions and operations that will be introduced in the new PA to be implemented, we have considered, you see the, the priorities here, um, so we took into account the following four um, components the national strategy for industry, the, the strategy industry for the strategy for smart specialization, and of course the new uh, PA 2021-2027. Now, the new strategy for industry will be uh, published uh, shortly as part of a package that will be published. We have got a government and a coordinating committee, a steering committee that are preparing, are currently preparing the strategy, and uh, all priorities will be, that will be included in the strategy will have to answer the question: Why are we doing this? And give a good reason for it. Now, the three uh, sets of actions that we are considering in the Ministry of Development concerning Greek industry. The first set of actions include uh, in-house training. It, uh, this has been a standard need of uh, the market. We're talking about reskilling, upskilling. The second set of actions has to do with enhancing the extroversion of Greek businesses, especially uh, those that have got a multiplying effect when uh, they are uh, globally or internationally active. And uh, third, uh, green development and uh, resilience. 
We need to shift to green equipment, green infrastructures, and then training and retraining. Ten more seconds, Mrs. Kalkos. And I uh, will conclude. This is my last slide. So on this last slide, I'd like to show you, in essence, actually prove or demonstrate that it's, it's not only words. The, we Everything is turned into actions. The, we have got uh, the smart manufacturing action that will be run by the General Secretary for Industry. We're talking about a state aid of uh, 73 million for um, small and very small businesses in order for them to use robotics, introduce smart um, uh, manufacturing technologies, uh, digitize their production lines, manufacturing lines, and use uh, 5G technologies. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to this panel and uh, send a message. There are a lot of challenges, and uh, sometimes we might feel pessimistic given the crisis that we experience, but at the same time, and this is something that I heard yesterday in the general, assembly, general uh, in the general session of uh, the uh, SEV, that um, despite the difficult juncture, we can play the role that this country deserves to play, given good planning, provided that we have a good planning, which we have, and a lot of hard work. Unfortunately, the microphone of the lady is breaking up. We couldn't hear everything. We thank Mrs. Eftichidou. We will come back. And we apologize for the technical uh, deficiencies. We will come back uh, with questions if we have time. We will go on right away to the next uh, presentation by Mr. Uh, Georgios Zervos, the Smart Specialization Strategy. Thank you, Michalis. I uh, hope you can hear me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for me to participate in this uh, conference on growth as a panelist because this is a conference which is a uh, landmark for growth and for the PA. It is also a joy for me because I see my fellow panelists uh, and among them various colleagues with whom during the consultation for the new programs we work together. I see also colleagues from the European Commission with whom we have completed a technically exemplary procedure. As you know, the Special Secretary for the Management of uh, ERDF and Cohesion Fund has been uh, re-established in August 2020. I'm responsible for two programs and responsible for the planning and completion of the negotiation for the three programs, Competitiveness, Transport and Environment and Climate Change for the period 21-27. All this happened under the crisis conditions of the pandemic. Consequently, facing the pandemic impact on businesses and the programs for the next period was the main job that the Special Secretariat had to do. Based on the results, I think that we have sufficiently responded to that. EPANEC proved to be one of the biggest programs for recovery. So, EPANEC proved to be one of the basic tools for the resilience and recovery of the businesses during the pandemic. Just two quantitative data. There are more than 516,000 uh, approved applications of a budget of more than 4.5 billion euros. Businesses 
that participated in the well-known actions that were implemented to face the pandemic. This is a contribution of an OP. And these quantitative data are first seen for an OP in all programming periods, throughout the programming periods. Today, the absorption of the program exceeds 90% from 19% at, in the middle of 2019, despite the doubling of the budget. Without this higher performance, the impact of the pandemic on the SMEs in Greece would have been multiple. Without the support of ERDF and REACT-EU, the businesses would not have proven so resilient. The management of the NSRF has shown that the resilience of businesses in multifaceted crises is something that we need to be calculated on a cross-cutting basis and in a systematic way. And it needs to govern the rationale of the intervention of all development programs. The recent approval of the new program on competitiveness 21-27 is an important success for the Ministry of Development because it is the first big competitiveness program that is approved in the EU. Three are the main components, timely preparation, large consultation and successful negotiation. But what was different and what has been achieved? Already from autumn 2020, the direction of the political leadership in the Ministry was to plan and negotiate the program in order to ensure the continuity in the financing of SMEs. This objective has been achieved with daily cooperation with the secretaries in the ministry, without the uh, invaluable contribution of whom, Themis Eftichidou, Dimitris Kalkos, Thanasis Kiryazis, without them a few things would have been done but also with all the uh, line ministry secretaries. Nothing would have been achieved if we did not have the uh, decisive contribution of the managing authority uh, executives. Very few things would have been achieved without them. A similar effort is undertaken by the managing authority of the environment uh, program and the transport program, the approval of which we are expect expecting. What is the framework and what is the targeting of the program of 21-27? First of all, innovative and smart transformation of SMEs. But with, within which framework? The first main feature is the turn of medium-term strategy. Resilience vis-à-vis -vis the, uh, the enterprises and development in order to increase the uh, value added. Second separation, distinction of the actions with the other development programs that exist uh, within or outside the uh, PA. Third, specialization uh, of the investment based on the model of smart specialization linking research and innovation and um, competitiveness and entrepreneurship. Fourth, we have an increase of the funds for research and innovation, and there is a uh, considerable upgrading of the role of the industry. Fifth, despite the subsidies, there is an important budget for the access of SMEs to funding with financial instruments, enhancing the successful experience of the last two years with the decisive uh, contribution of the um, HDB. Sixth, part of it will be dedicated to achieve the climate objectives of the country. And last, the beneficiaries will see that there is a simplification of the procedures for the submission, the uh, disbursement uh, of the procedures. And of course, a great effort has been undertaken by the ministry. The times have been reduced dramatically. In the past, when we had a deadline for a submission of the proposal, we needed 18 to 20 months just for the evaluation and the approval. Now we need just two to three weeks. And after the approval, within 10 days, for the actions to assist enterprises, we have the disbursement. What is the planning of the ministry? Because this is a very nice reference, but what is uh, about to happen? The ministry aims to activate the program within the third quarter of this year there will not be and we will not allow it to be a financing gap in the support of SMEs. Now, let's see what about smart specialization. 
What does it mean, sports specialization in the competitiveness program? It is for focusing the investments of innovation and entrepreneurship. It is a national strategy that has been shaped under the responsibility of the General Secretariat for uh, Investments and the PA under the responsibility of the General Secretariat of Industry. It focuses on eight sectors, the same sectors as in the period 2014-2020, but we have a simplification of the governance system. And this is an enabling condition. Moreover, the role of the regions has been reinforced and we have a unit for the planning, uh, coordination and follow-up. So, we reinforce the inter-regional cooperation, whereas a large part of the competitiveness program will be specialized and allocated uh, in the, with the process of business discovery. The research uh, community will participate, the civil society will participate, and ODI will participate, and the General Secretariat for Industry. And ODI will play the role of innovation agency. The competitiveness program is the most important uh, tool to support smart specialization. The strategy is related with uh, funds of 2.2 billion euros from all financial instruments. The RRF, the ROPs, the competitiveness program, the Just Transition program, and it is called to affect another 4.4 billion euros that are destined for the support of uh, SMEs on a regional or a national level. From the Ministry of Development and the General Secretariat for Investments and the PA, a large effort has been undertaken. First of all, to rectify, to remedy all pathogenicities to avoid delays of the period 2014-2020 where we lost uh, two years and to enhance the totality of all available resources for competitiveness because enhancement does not mean only um, absorption. It means viability, sustainability of the investments and measurable results for the competitiveness of the businesses in all regions of the country. And it is a main challenge to ensure the sustainability of these investments after the end of this decade when the uh, available resources will be less. Why will they be less? Today we are at the beginning of implementation of the biggest ever uh, package uh, allocated to the country, 80 billion euros. And this is the most crucial issue, to have a success of public development policies, especially today under the prism of various external factors and multifaceted crisis. And this is the major bed for the Ministry of Development, the Special Secretariat, the General Secretariat, to enhance in the best possible way and the maximum value added of the resources to the benefit of SMEs and to the benefit of the Greek society at large. Thank you. Thank you, Special Secretary, General, Special Secretary. And without further ado, we move on to the next speaker, Mr. Panelis Drozakis, who's going to talk to us about financial tools to strengthen the export orientation and competitiveness of Greek businesses. Mr. Drozakis, you have the floor. Thank you very much. It is an honor and pleasure for me to be here today. And indeed, the words uh, competitiveness and extroversion of Greek businesses or expert degradation of Greek businesses are the key words uh, for a country to move ahead in, on the global market because uh, we are in a market where there is a free movement of uh, people and capitals. And this means that uh, you either have uh, competitive businesses that can attract funds, capital, or the people who of the country, the uh, capable people, will flee abroad, uh, or it's up to us to gain them back. To, so, expert orientation or extroversion and competitiveness are the A to Z of any sound economy. And I believe that it's very important to say that uh, we're also a bit lucky because. Every time uh, a major technological change occurs, the countries that take advantage of such change can take a step forward. A century ago, 
we had the internal combustion engines. After that, an entire economy was built on this, built on this, and we moved on to a more efficient and richer economy and society. Then came IT, which I personally took advantage of and uh, set up my company Fortnet. So whenever a new technology uh, comes in, it's an, always an uh, opportunity, a challenge as well, but also an opportunity. So currently, AI, big data analytics, are major opportunities for a country because this revolution has to do with people not huge buildings or infrastructures. It's about people. It's the human capital that uh, plays a key part. So, looking at this from this point of view, I believe that a lot of steps have been taken in the right direction, but we want to take more steps because essentially we should not be the last company in uh, technology exports in the European Union, apart from uh, tourism, which is uh, an export activity, all other economy sectors need to also become competitive and export oriented in a dynamic European environment. How did uh, the other countries make it? Well, in essence, they set up development banks. Development banks in every country, such as in France, PPA France, or KFW in uh, uh, Germany, uh, they have got a specific uh, mission and role to find the, to identify the financing gaps and uh, fi finance entrepreneurship. This is our gospel. This is what we should boost in order to move ahead. So we're trying to identify the financing gaps and devise the financing tools. In other countries, this has been done even more effectively. We in Greece have tried really hard the past two years to catch up and we need to run it even faster. In other countries, uh, there are the elected, there is always the elected government that has the political power to design the policies. And there is the so-called development bank, which designs the financing tools, financial tools for everyone. The, uh, the financial bank follows the policies, but the financing tools are bundled by development banks. In the past couple of years, a lot of work has been done, and I'm been lucky because uh, Mrs. Kazi Petru, the pres the chairman, the chairwoman of the bank will be uh, addressing you in the next panel. But I want to set the general framework, the context rather, that we're at a very good stage and now we need to move even faster. A very brief uh, description. Our vision is to enhance the competitiveness of the group the development. Uh, in other words, to be competitive in the European market, not within uh, the domestic economy. And this uh, competitiveness in the European market help us work in teams. We've uh, all grown accustomed to being our own captains, captains of our own ships, making our own decisions for our own businesses. But in essence, matches are won by teams, not individual players. And only if we act jointly, and I was very happy a couple of years ago when I was in Crete at the conference of uh, hotel owners, where I saw the, the associations of various industrial sectors talking amongst them how they would uh, strengthen each other in order to move ahead. I believe this teamwork aspect is not characteristic of Greeks, but this should change. I have, uh, in essence, my, my I've run out of time, but there's a financing gap of approximately 17 billion. The bank 
has managed through targeted uh, fast and effective actions to fill this gap and instead of achieving the target of three to five billion it exceeded actually eight billion how very cleverly in fact but it's using two billion it leveraged the reminder six from the banking system hence reaching a total of eight billion this is the guarantee part so what do we do we co-finance we guarantee unfortunately as soon as uh, we and assumed uh, the management of the bank the covid pandemic broke out and um, there wasn't much uh, we could do because the patient the patient was about uh, w w because the greek economy was a ailing um, and uh, we've managed to keep it alive we saved approximately 18,000 jobs we created the necessary growth and now we aim at the development tools and those tools that will uh, combine ESG innovation criteria and extroversion. I believe I've already abused uh, the time allocated to me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Georgiakis, and for uh, sticking to the time allotted. If I may, just one sentence regarding the export of products that you mentioned. In the PA, we have a repetition of the target that we have in the Pisaridis report, the plan for the Greek economy, for a doubling of the exports from 19% of the GDP to 48%. I hope we will be able to approach this objective despite the changes that have taken place in the meanwhile. Now we come to the next speaker, Mr. Vasilios Korkidis, who will present the topic the next uh, day for Greek SMEs under the new PA. It is a, an important feedback from the market for all of us who deal with the programs. Thank you very much. Indeed, the PA is a vehicle to take us to the next day for SMEs, for our country and for the whole of Europe. Yesterday, Coming back from Brussels, I brought uh, a report uh, of McKinsey, which talks about the triple transition, the green, the energy transition, and the development of new skills, and mentions that investments must take place until 2030. That is, following the completion of the PA, approximately uh, 540 million for uh, 5 million enterprises in Europe from 3.6 to 4.8 percent uh, increase for uh, businesses. And we need to have a budget of 360 million for digitalization, 340 for green development, and 40 million for uh, skills. If we think that we try to uh, achieve a growth of 3.6 to 4.8 uh, percent, and we see that in our country, in the first quarter, we had an increase of investments of 12.7%. I think this is a, um, a sign that could make us optimistic. If the PA is uh, designed around SMEs, yes it is, it can help SMEs, but the question is, are we SMEs in Greece? Because if we see the breakdown of the number of uh, employees and the turnover of the companies, of the businesses, based on the last data of um, the tax authority, we'll see that 806,000 companies employ one to nine people. That is 26% of the GDP and they constitute 97% of the total of enterprises, whereas in the EU of 27, the average is 93%. Now, if we go to small enterprises, which employ 10 to 49 people, we're ha we have only 36,000, 54 million euros turnover. They are 20% of the companies, whereas in the EU, this figure is 6%. 
Now, if we go to average uh, enterprises, 50 to 20, 250 people, 3,966 companies, 56 billion uh, turnover, that is 22% of the GDP, and it could be something between 04 to 0.5%, whereas in Europe it is 1%. And if we go to big companies, more than 250 people, uh, employees, Some people talk about 550, but if we take out the broader public sector, they are 300 something. The percentage is not uh, quantifiable. We must also examine the fact that 99.9% uh, .9 of the micro enterprises, small and average, employ 88% of employees in our country, whereas the corresponding uh, figure in Europe is 93% employing 66% of the employees. These are data that we need to analyze in order to adjust the new PA to the today's needs, which is not an SME but a micro enterprise. Why do I think that PA is so useful, so important, so necessary? Because the micro enterprise can become small or uh, SME, and the SME can be uh, strengthened and become sustainable. So we need the PA to magnify the very small enterprises and to reinforce, to strengthen the SMEs. And this is the correct terminology. We also need to see what is the state of SMEs today in these two sectors, digitalization and green transition but also skills, because lately we have been listening about the grand resignation in the US and in the UK. Here it will happen because there will be demand by other companies, by other employers, and you might risk to lose your personnel. So in order to keep the personnel, you need to remunerate them uh, well and to be provided to uh, upskill and to evolve, to develop. Now, what is happening with digitalization? We're talking about digitalization of SMEs. Okay, we have spent two or three seven year periods. And what is the situation today? What is the state of play after the pandemic, which pushed many companies to digitize or to think that they digitized? First of all, digitalization must be as the Secretary, Special Secretary said it must take place uh, from the state in order to save 20% of man hours uh, a year due to red tape. Six out of ten SMEs today <coughs> have systems of uh, digital marketing. Two out of ten have incorporated them in the pandemic. Three out of ten we have systems, electronic systems to control warehouses, orders. Two out of ten have an integrated application of eShop, but eShop across the board, not selectively. Two out of ten participate in a online platform, which gives you the opportunity to sell, that is to use uh, the system. And we have just one out of ten which analyzes and processes the digital data that it has available. If we go to online sales, e-sales, those who have a satisfactory digital um, equipment and organization, one third of their turnover corresponds to online sales. So I think that the PA has a large uh, field uh, uh, scope for intervention and there is a lot to do and all surveys show that there will be an expansion of uh, e-trade by 30% in the next seven years so I think that we need to cover the lost ground and not to be the followers but to be the leaders of an effort at some point I think we have this potential finally let me conclude by saying that SMEs have needs and no one should uh, disregard that, no one should neglect that. We cannot uh, 
put aside the debts that have accumulated uh, Mr. Jodzakis talked about Tepic and uh, one can see that 40% uh, 40,000 uh, companies are bankrupt are bankable excuse me all the others are outside so uh, 5 out of 10 have a problem of liquidity uh, 3 out of 10 have cash for just one month and uh, 2 out of 10 do not have uh, cash and they go on a day by day uh, basis 3 out of 10 have multiple uh, overdue debts. We cannot only uh, approach just two out of ten who are bankable because we need to carry the whole of them because it can have a domino effect. So if eight out of ten uh, fall, they will uh, take with them the two out of ten who are robust. However, we need to close on a positive note. Eight out of ten businesses for the first uh, six months of 2022 declared that they will retain their personnel. One out of ten said that they will increase their personnel, and just half out of ten said that they will reduce their personnel. I think this is quite positive for employment. And this is food for thought to adjust the PA and make it more tailor-made, although there is a very good planning. But the planning was done uh, two years ago, before the pandemic, so maybe we should adjust the new data in order to be more uh, happy and uh, on, on both sides, that is, uh, the government to assist uh, entrepreneurship because we have improved a lot of things in the PA process during the last 10 years. It's not just not to lose one euro, but to uh, utilize and uh, have results for every euro. We have to think small, with small steps. Of course, all small players want to become big players, but we need to put this on a good basis on a sound basis without uh, being inducted. So I think there is a lot of concern in the European organizations uh, regarding the time to come. However, I believe that our country is more resilient on many fronts. It will manage to achieve this triple uh, transition and an important role will be played by the PA. So. PA is a vehicle on which we should which we should all board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Korkidis. Now we pass the floor to Ms. Kereku, who is going to talk to us about uh, uh, the sustainable model for tourism development. This sounds very interesting, and the title is quite uh, appealing. Thank you very much, first of all, for this um, invitation. It's an honor, a pleasure for me here today to present the National Tourism Organization. Uh, the importance of the new PA has been uh, explained by all previous speakers. We will agree that this is a huge opportunity for this transition to a Greece uh, uh, that will be more creative and uh, significant in the present and the future. However, uh, my, my uh, uh, title is about new entrepreneurship. Well, first of all, uh, this audience is made up again mainly of technocrats, but uh, visionary speech, visionary, visionary words could be linked with technocratic thinking and because this is the only way to implement our ideas and concepts as well as uh, our vision. Without Unless we're technocratic enough, we can have an implementation. So what could this mean? What could fair business be in tourism? Talking about tourism, covering, making up 25% of the economy, um, of, of, the, of our productive economy. We will all agree that uh, it is very good.
fairness is always about something good. Today we're going to add new terms, but sustainable, viable. So in the new PA tourism is part of uh, the sectoral program one and the competitiveness program, as well as other, as well as in the other sectoral programs, and of course the 30 regional programs. The new PA, along with the national uh, RRF, it, we design or rather we launch development in a sustainable and positive manner. Digital transformation, which is quite dynamic, innovation, green development, blue development, and balanced geographic uh, development and we need to look into the service about the bearing capacity of every location in order to talk about sustainable tourism, social convergence, the anthropocentric uh, ap ap approach of this uh, sector, the use of uh, human resources, the workforce, uh, inclus inclusiveness and just transition are uh, non-negotiable conditions. They are fundamental principles that uh, govern the current program to, to which the Prime Minister himself has committed uh, and these principles we believe uh, are should uh, be the guide uh, for uh, the new tourism which is the mention of uh, the uh, Greek economy. 15 billion is the expected um, revenues and this is a year when we see, when we expect that the that tourism will fully recover. Hopefully there will be no more crisis, no other crisis. So I'd like to say that this resilient sector this year is recovering and I believe that we're going to launch a new period for tourism which will mainly focus on quality. This is our key objective. So this is the good news of the uh, PA and uh, th that will uh, also contribute to tourism. Talking with uh, people from uh, uh, tourist businesses, I have quite often heard problems and concerns of these people regarding the cost of any sustainable investment. And this is something that should be looked into by all competent uh, authorities. Uh, but these new competitiveness programs will provide tourism with those tools required in order to, uh, for them to be able to make uh, the investments in sustainability. So I'd like to call all chambers and the stakeholders to be informed, to train people and explain what this transition means for businesses because only through a collective effort and the change in our mindset will we be able to have the desired uh, results. And the three sigmas in Greek uh, uh, which are translated into collaboration uh, and um, partnership uh, and um, uh, cons consistency will guide us. Fair business in tourism is what we need and uh, we should listen to what travelers say. Young travelers or new travelers that have emerged from the pandemic are quite different and they, they look at holidays in a different manner. This new traveler, this new visitor is not only interested in having sun and see in their holiday. They want uh, a holistic experience. They want to become locals for a few days and this is something that we can offer them through proper entrepreneurship so that we can turn them into ambassadors of our country. It is uh, a, a, an excellent opportunity to promote uh, the less famous uh, destinations apart from the Greek islands there's the rest of Greece where there are nice destinations for peace and quiet, something that young people re are really after. Our uh, uh, mainland, uh, our uh, mountainous re areas, 
and you may have seen our campaigns, we have placed emphasis on winter tourism as well, because Greece is about winter as well, not just summer, and we need to prolong the tourism period, hence uh, business will help in this direction. So Young People is are about um, experiences, uh, sustainable destinations, in order for young people to choose the destination, they s first see whether the community contributes to green development and green mindset, along with digitization and uh, technological infrastructure. This is what helps them choose their uh, destination and click the book booking button. So we need to uh, have a holistic approach. We also see that uh, new travelers are looking for destinations that are about uh, inclusiveness, that they are inclusive of vulnerable groups, that they have got accommodation for people with disability. Um, and Greece is lagging behind and through to the PA, we can now invest in this accommodation that are managed by women are also preferred by young people talking about social co uh, uh, convergence and cohesion so young travelers are redefined and uh, redefined rather their priorities so Greece you will want Greece, you will want to stay forever. This is our new campaign. Qualitative uh, tourism, fair business. And this is why I'd like to tell business people not to be afraid, not to be scared away by energy efficiency, energy upgrading, and bioclimatic architecture. Research around the world shows that bioclimatic architecture can help us save up to two-thirds of the energy. I know I need to conclude, so I will, by saying that, that uh, ethics in fair business need to be ensured, uh, need to be ensured, in, we need, in, and this can be achieved through well-paid employees with uh, um, who are satisfied and in conclusion I'd like to say the National Tourism Organization with the aid of the Digital Tra uh, Policy uh, Ministry is upgraded is becoming digital to use uh, all, they'll use all these tools in the best possible manner a huge digital map will uh, show all the investments that will be implemented so we've got a um, I've got a long way ahead of us full of investments that can help tourism thank you thank you very much Mrs. Kereku the issues that you raised, the carrying capacity, carrying capacity, sustainability are very interesting. And since time is uh, really pressing, we come to Mr. Konstantinos Nyafas, executive of the European Commission, who will talk about the contribution of digitalization of SMEs and research organizations to fostering innovation. Since uh, there is uh, no time available, we will, have, we will take no questions. Thank you very much. It is a great uh, honor and privilege for me to be here. I will try to be as brief as possible. Also because many of the previous speakers mm, gave details about uh, the topic I was about to present, that is the digitalization of SMEs through the competitiveness program and how this can be linked to the introduction of innovation. Digital te technologies change our life rapidly. The way we live, we buy, we communicate, we socialize, 
digitalization in the last years has had a major impact on economy and the society through the improvement of the standard of living and reinforcement of access to knowledge and public services. We have new business models and uh, models for employment thanks to digital transformation. The pandemic accelerated all this in the last two years and made obvious how important they are. Digital technologies shape whole industries and values of cha chains of value and they reinforce available information about the market. Generally speaking, Europe is on a convergence path as regards digital infrastructure, but more needs to be done to accelerate their commercial use, especially by SMEs. More than 90% of SMEs in Europe consider that they lag behind as regards digital innovation. It is a matter of size as well, as Mr. Korkidis mentioned. Very small enterprises and small enterprises have difficulties in introducing digital technologies especially in agricultural and remote areas. They do not have access, easy access to broadband services. The employees who have skills in the sector tend to concentrate in a few, a few countries, mainly in urban centers, and they do not go to um, smaller cities or rural areas. So SMEs find difficulties in finding specialized personnel and the proper associates to achieve this uh, digital leap. Very few of them uh, enhance them for their transactions in the market or the models they, they, they use for production. Digital technologies have a dynamics to provide uh, a boost to sustainable growth ensuring performance and efficiency and improving the services on a daily scale, on a daily basis however this uh, enhancement conceals many differences among member states companies in less developed countries have lagged behind whereas the more intense uh, utilization of these services uh, ICT that is ha is observed in more developed member states so digitalization must be developed on an equal footing in order not to feed a gap between the member states. Given the increased importance of digital technologies for the competitiveness of businesses, the above is an important issue from the viewpoint of, digi of um, the cohesion policy. So, in the sector of digitalization, Greece is facing several challenges. The main gaps are identified in uh, the lack of uh, connectivity, the slow adoption of digital technologies in the private and the public sector, especially by SMEs, uh, small and very small SMEs. The digital uh, technologies are uh, encountered at a slow pace. Four out of ten businesses have still a basic level of digital intensity. We have some examples. For instance, the adoption of digital uh, technologies. The Greek companies are at, the, at half of the average of the European Union. And they are below uh, this level for cloud computing and AI. The overall challenges of digital transformation for companies must be taken into account in the selection of the new actions uh, for the new period of the PA. The competitiveness program, we have seen with great satisfaction that it was approved yesterday, but also the regional programs include this specific objective, which is uh, identified as enhancing the benefits of digitalization for businesses, the, the citizens, in businesses and in public services. They have to support innovative actions that create benefits and new services to citizens and companies. So the objectives related to this action in the following sectors must be a priority for the investments of um, the uh, ERDF and the competitiveness program. First is the adoption of ICT by SMEs business to business, business to customer, customer to customer, including the infrastructure 
services for supporting this objective. Second, new systematically um, upgraded services, including the adoption of pan-European uh, functional models and uh, electronic services to, uh, uh, to attract special uh, social groups. Digitalization must be a factor for facilitating innovation and at the same time the creation of new knowledge m will be a driver for new um, companies. We will have creation of ecosystems that can be created around uh, um, incubators and technological parks in order to provide uh, these services to SMEs. These SMEs will have access to these uh, s uh, services. And such uh, initiatives are uh, in the national uh, strategy for digital transformation and they are developed in the program of digital transformation. The objective is to support the businesses, especially uh, startups and innovative companies that will make uh, viable the new products and uh, new services. The new multi-annual fiscal uh, framework will contribute to the achievement of these objectives through the uh, InvestEU of the uh, SIF. Digital um, technologies can give a boost to a more sustainable growth, increasing uh, efficiency, and improving the services to citizens and businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nyafas. I would like to thank all the panelists. Under the pressure of time, they managed to develop so very interesting ideas and dimensions. Unfortunately, we don't have the time for any summary that I had to do as a moderator. Thank you for attending and being with us, and we hope we will meet again.
Λοιπόν, καλησπέρα σε όλους και όλους. Good afternoon, everyone. We've got the pleasure and honor to have, a, to have with us the Vice President of the European Commission, our dear friend Valerius Hinas. Needless to say how important uh, he is for us. It is for us here, not only in the PA, but not only because we have here with us the Vice President of the European Commission, but because of PA and Greek government, we are in a position to look the European Commission in the eye. We have achieved things. We shouldn't be intimidated, despite the hard work. To We should always... Um, say what has been done well. Our Greece has pioneered in uh, the BA, in the uh, RRF, and we have also scored very well in the new sectoral programs, in the Just Transition Fund, in the Competitiveness Program, Digital Transformation next week. And gradually, I believe that in the, in the summer, There will have been, uh, they will be approved with a public administration, a government, a Greek society that has left uh, all the genesis the past, and we can plan uh, sophisticated European programs as champions, uh, paving perhaps new ways. So we're all looking forward to listening to you. You have the floor. Your Excellency Minister, Regional Governors, General Directors, Representatives of uh, agencies and authorities, I'm very pleased to be here today with you. I remember the, one of the last public events before the pandemic in January 2020, if I recall, in the uh, Music Hall of Athens. It, We, that was the launch event for the new PA in the presence of the Minister, of the Prime Minister, and my colleague Eliza Ferreira, competent commissioner. And uh, one of the things we had we agreed upon unanimously back then was the, that this new PA should be different than the, its previous versions. It should. Uh, cover different areas and it should ref also reflect the successes and failures of the previous ones. This new PA should be different because the country and the economy should uh, make a leapfrog, a sustainability leapfrog that would promote and prioritize uh, transition, twin transition, and of course, increasing productivity and social justice, two key parameters for our country. So what we have ahead of us in the next five, seven years, and all of you in here have got a special contribution responsibility uh, for this, is no less than the radical renewal and revision of the national economic model. And this cannot be achieved unless we manage to fully leverage the unprecedented investment opportunities that are opening up before us. And I am using this unprecedented, the word unprecedented, because I'd like to reiterate something that I've said quite often in public, that never in the 41 years, never before in the 41 years of uh, the country's membership of the European Union had we had so many re financial resources available to support this productive reconstruction. Never before. We have got the significant and resource of PA 2127, and next to it, another PA, the National Plan Greece uh, 2.0, the National Plan for the Recovery of the Economy, which gives us more 
power but uh, also more responsibilities because managing these two different development perspectives is not a simple exercise and of course we can celebrate but if we get down into the power plant of all this, the, the machine shop of all this, you, where you all work, you understand that the expectations, the responsibilities, the software of everything that we need to do for coming years is different and will have to contribute to the development course of uh, Greece and Greek economy. I am very glad that we're having this discussion today because we're celebrating, as it was rightly said by Dimitris Skalkos, we're celebrating two major national Euro first Euro Premier, Euro Championships. First of all, the Greek PA was the first to be approved among the 26 of the European Union a major national success and the second is that the three sectoral programs worth six billion of competitiveness just transition and civil protection programs have also been approved to be followed shortly by the digital transformation program I can recall in the 30 years of my involvement in the European policies, I can't recall, never before, our country, Greece, to have set up a new uh, NSRF or PA so effectively, so efficiently, so t in such a timely manner and uh, so well. And I'd like to thank the people of the machine shop, the people who undertook who shouldered this responsibility, Yanis Akiris, Dimitris Tsalkos, the general directors involved, people who are worth, who, uh, uh, who deserve our uh, recognition, and even more so because they are not after it. This is not what they're after, recognition. Ladies and gentlemen, Europe has been through a nightmarish period of the past couple of years. First, the pandemic, the first pandemic that hit humanity after 1918, then the successive waves of uh, the migration flows utilized by authoritarian neighbors who want to attack Europe in this uh, cunning manner, exploiting human uh, pain, and then finally, the illegal, unnecessary, unsolicited, um, and unjustified attack of uh, Russia on Ukraine. Now, given these uh, external risks and threats, the Greek and European economies have shown remarkable uh, resilience. And now, once again, we can see that uh, the development engine uh, is being uh, warmed up investments have increased at record levels, two record levels, and this is no accident. It reflects the upgrading of the national brand, and it is also proof of the, the potential of the Greek workforce and business world. It is also proof that structural and targeted government intervention, most of which have been financed by the European Union, such as the Sinead Garcia program, lubricated this engine for this uh, successful uh, rally race. Now, I had, we, we, more efforts will be required, similar uh, in ingenuousness and hard work from everyone. We're at a juncture where the components, all the greens of the perfect storm are being um, accumulated in the horizon. Energy crisis, unprecedented uh, inflationary pressures, even the risk of a global food crisis. 
So the European global economies have got major threats and risks to face, to deal with in the foreseeable future. And it's in this context that we need to look at our affairs. And I'd like to focus on the dynamics of the new PA, because I believe and I expect that we have no better, no better um, weapon to fight at the current juncture. The PA, the new PA, makes more than 20 billion euro available to our country all community resources in order to um, serve three key priorities. First, uh, smart development, focusing on digital transition and innovation. Then Green Europe with low, increasingly low uh, coal, uh, CO2 emissions and social Europe that which will be inclusive. If we look at these objectives in more detail. It would start with the first, the boosting of in, uh, competitiveness and smart economy. We're talking about Greece here. And this objective cannot be served unless we uh, focus on SMEs. The Greek SMEs are the backbone of economic growth and employment in our country. They are faced with problems. They face problems, though. They have faced problems. Uh, they, so they've got old problems and new ones. They, This sector is fragmented. It's not easily bankable. has got low innovation rates. And there is some mistrust. Or rather, they, they are... This is a sector which is... Um, uh, suspicious of new technologies and digital technologies. So these are the issues that we need to resolve. Promote clusters, collaborations with research centers, promote um, advanced uh, skills, set targets so that uh, digital technologies are not considered a luxury but rather a self-evident component of uh, tra any trade activity. Do more for startups, but startups that, apart from their founders, they should help to the national growth effort, development effort, and of course, complete the digitization of the state, which will not o will not only boost competitiveness but also put an, uh, an end to a state that has uh, worked through. Uh, in-person contacts, phone calls, and uh, pulling strings. Digital transformation will not only boost digital uh, economy, but also the quality of uh, democracy. The second target on climate change and tra green transition concerns us all directly because the effects of the climate uh, change are no longer a theoretic approach or academic uh, research. It is something we experience every day. We experienced it quite intensively last summer. We're a country highly exposed to climate change, and this is why it is very important for the new PA to contribute decisively to green transition and also, thanks to the sectoral civil. Uh, protection sectoral program help in the protection of uh, the populations and areas that uh, are hit by floods, wildfires, uh, earthquakes, and so on and so forth. So the new PA will need to invest in the prevention and management of these risks and uh, and boost uh, build the capacity of services to respond well to help acquire better firefighting equipment, additional training and mobilization of volunteers, and we'll have to build a, a firewall, a protection wall that will allow us to defend ourselves against such asymmetric threats. The ongoing unrest in the energy markets of the past few months has um, A 
has made it necessary to improve and rationally use energy. energy and achieve energy efficiency. So you've got build, public buildings, private residences need to be improved in order to reduce energy consumption at the same time to, at the same time as uh, this, at the same time as the closing of all Ignite units by 2028, which is the ambitious program of this government. We understand that some areas are more exposed to this um, necessary and aspirational commitment, and this is why we've got the Just Transition Program of 1.6 billion, one of the three uh, programs that came first, uh, were first to approved by the European Commission. Actually, it was only approved uh, this morning. Maybe this is an omen, a uh, good omen. And this is going to help uh, um, support the areas of West Macedonia and uh, Peloponnese that are most exposed to the, the decarbonization campaign. So we need a transition that will not only touch upon uh, energy, but also bring along profound uh, structural interventions into society and also this is linked to better management of uh, better waste and uh, wastewater management and renewal of transport. The third target is uh, social Europe, social Greece that will be just, fair um, and Visibly, everyone leaving no one behind. This calls for major investment in people and their skills. Europe and Greece, without uh, that, will be inclusive and uh, without any discrimination, ensuring equal access to quality services for everyone, according to the social rights uh, pillar of the European Union, as well as uh, the European Union treaties. I would like to be quite clear. This is a message I conveyed back then in January 2020, and I'm reiterating here today, being in a better position. This financing in this area, the, the community resources in this uh, field need to concern those who are left outside, not those who are on the inside. So these resources need to be targeted to those who are trying to enter the labor market, to set up a business, to open a business, and to create a business, not those who already have guaranteed access to mechanisms, uh, training, and uh, connections. This is a major challenge, but we owe this to the most vulnerable groups of the Greek population that quite rightly uh, demand equitable and equitable access to community funding. This is why the new uh, PA focuses on uh, uh, groups of people that find it hard to enter the labor market, young people who are unemployed, who are not in education or in employment or in training, and the long term unemployed, and of course, those who are entitled to um, international protection, whom we should not forget. Above all, if we want, to keep our young people in their local, in their areas, and uh, turn brain drain into brain gain. We need to make major effort for the upskilling and reskilling of people. Europe and Greece need a revolution in skills. We've, for the first time, we've got the resources to achieve this, but we need to do this in a smart and innovative manner. I still find it hard to under, find it hard to understand why there are four or five uh, different authorities responsible for training and education of the population. Because to bring the revolution, we need we should start with this end this fragmentation of skills architecture and declare this revolution because wherever we go, representatives of the market economy tell us repetitively 
that they don't have the people they need and they don't have the people they need for critical sectors of the economy in digital economy, tourism and, um, uh, com and hospitality in the primary sector, in the healthcare sector. So these people that we don't have, we need to find them and we need to find them declaring this skills revolution, skills revolution, putting an end to fragmentation of competence and uh, embarking on this major national uh, effort so that the next uh, international, Thessaloniki International Fair, I'd like us to officially uh, announce uh, this national effort regarding uh, skilling up, skilling, training and education. So in this uh, third pillar of uh, social cohesion, large part of the financing will be injected into rural, insular and coastal areas, populations, people who uh, that do not have direct or immediate access to training organizations and uh, I welcome the presence of representatives of local uh, of government. Cities and municipalities will play a key part and will be levers. They can be the ones, they can be the architects of this uh, effort. So it is very important to support these initiatives in the third field of uh, social cohesion and uh, equal access because we work not just for the economy but mainly for the society. Dear friends, I would like to conclude this uh, so honoring opportunity that you gave me to address you on the first day of your conference. I would like to conclude with some thoughts. It, is, it goes without saying, and it is not a trope, a rhetorical trope, that we are living in historical times. We are experiencing moments where the historical accelerator is regulated at speeds that we have never, never seen in the past. It is a matter of tectonic changes in the geopolitical, economic, environmental and social level. In these uncertain circumstances, when a dual, a double uncertainty emerges, this is the following. If there is a dual certainty, it is the following. Only unified we can, only united we can stand. No individual state, old, new, uh, can face these uh, challenges. This is the first side of the certainty. And the other side of this certainty. It is not enough for all of us to be united together, but the mix of our economic policy must be revised in order to achieve that. We need to make decisions that leave behind taboos and certainties. The same way we did with the RRF, the Resilience and Recovery Fund, the same we did with the massive uh, purchase of vaccines, the same we do now with the sixth, sixth package of sanctions against Russia, and the fact that we buy weapons for the people in Ukraine who are fighting uh, against Russia, and we are paying uh, for these weapons with the taxpayers' money. All this shows that Europe must uh, exceed itself and must adjust to the difficulties. This self, uh, which used to be immobile, to be in its uh, little cloud of happiness, and it is clear that our country has to adjust itself to these global trends. We have here, too, a unique opportunity to revise radically our own economic model in a way that is socially just and fair and environmentally sustainable. We, the same as Europe, must have the courage to break eggs, to face historical pathogenicities, deficiencies that we have left aside and we have left them to become big. The type of difficulties that we have ahead 
does not allow us to do anything else. We have to face these problems and we have now the weapons for that. We have the new PA, we have the Resilience Fund, the RRF, but over and above all we have a government that is positioned towards the positive side and a government that has shown that it, it does dare to face the demons of the past. So I would like to share with you my deep conviction. If in the past, in similar beginnings of our structural efforts, we had the resources, we did not have the vision. In the recent past of the economic crisis, we had the vision, but we did not have the resources. Now it is the first time in the 40 years that we have both the resources and the vision. And this makes me absolutely optimistic that we will make it. We will do it. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you for being so brave until this hour to listen to the last panel for today. Warm thanks to the organizers, Mr. Tsakiris, Mr. Skalkos, for the invitation to be here today to discuss about what else infrastructure. I was thinking of having an introduction, but uh, I saw Michalis Gumas avoiding his. However, 
I will do mine. I will be brief because most of um, what I had to say was said by Mr. Skinas. It is true that the Greek economy is finding itself in a critical crossroads following successive crises, following 12 years of uh, lagging behind in investment expenditure. We're talking about a reduction of uh, assets of 95 asset, uh, billion. But it is a unique juncture in the Greek economy. We have in our arsenal some mighty weapons. The RRF, the new PA, the uh, common agricultural policy. So if we add this up together with leverage from private uh, funds, we're talking of 100 billion euros. If this is funneled to productive investments, they will make up the financing gap of more than 10 years now, and they will have a great multiplier effect, a great um, result in growth. However, of course, we have some uh, risks. The crisis are never ending. Mr. Skinas mentioned, we, he talked about the inflationary wave, we have the energy crisis, we have the war in Ukraine. We should also not forget the public debt, because we know that the GDP uh, will increase. We are examining the ratio of uh, debt to GDP. We should not forget that we have also a uh, very aggressive neighbor, which might increase our numerator, and therefore the expenditures, and therefore having a uh, fiscal debt. In the analysis, we have examined, we have researched in depth the issue of the PA, and we will do so again in the coming time. It is true that starting from the Mediterranean uh, integrated uh, programs and the CSF and the uh, community support frameworks, we have had a whole GDP input in the country or the this money could have funded half of the public debt of the country. So it is very important, all these resources, must be efficient, must be effective, and we need to see that. Talking about um, efficiency, I think that infrastructure is the sector where we see the economies of scale of these resources and we avoid this uh, fragmentation of resources in various projects. We have with us uh, an excellent team to talk about uh, electromobility, digital infrastructure, logistics, multimodal transport for the ESG criteria and public uh, infrastructures and how the NSRF infrastructure is the sustainable way forward. I will start with, uh, on my left, Mrs. Alexandra Zuku is the Secretary General for Energy and Mineral Resources in the Ministry for Environment and Energy. She will talk about electromobility. Good afternoon, everyone. Although, Dimitris, I think that uh, I should have asked for an electric bike for uh, my presentation. I will uh, go directly to the gist of my presentation to respect the time. I have been invited to talk about electrification, electromobility, which uh, the title says is a key solution towards climate neutrality. The first comment I would like to make is that electromobility is not a luxury. 
there is an erroneous perception that electromobility is a sport for uh, the happy few. But it is not so. Electromobility is the new European way to move, to reduce the pollution in the atmosphere. This is how we should see it. We're not talking about cars, we're talking about a new culture in transportation. And uh, if some think that this is a redundant luxury, we can reply that it is a transition more friendly to the environment. And the transition to an environment that is better is not a uh, privilege of the happy few. It is a privilege for the whole population. And this is what the government is trying to do every day that goes by to make it more accessible. In Greece, transport is the second major source of uh, GHG. 85% is related to uh, road transportation. I'm, uh, I imagine that you read that a few days ago that the European Parliament voted in favor of seizing of um, selling of some cars from 2035 onwards. In Greece, in the recent uh, climate law, we put a more ambitious objective than the one set by uh, voted by the European Parliament. We said that from 2030 onwards, we will prohibit conventional cars and we will have to turn ourselves to electromobility with, uh, of course, um, reservation to adjust to European law. So, as you see, we have a lot of uh, very ambitious objectives. To achieve those, we cannot remain seated uh, examining the figures uh, that we have set for 2030. When we took office in 2019, the situation in electromobility was as follows. We had a bit less than 1,000 electric uh, vehicles and 50 public uh, charges accessible. The first thing we did in 2019 was to put in the National Plan for Energy and Climate a road map where do we want to go as a country. The objective set was that by 2030 we wanted one out of three new cars to be um, electric. That was the objective in 2019 and we set ourselves quantitative objectives, that is to have a minimum number of new uh, cars. We said, for instance, new vehicles. If uh, it was below 1,000 in 2019, let's uh, set as an objective to have uh, 1,260 new uh, cars in 2021, uh, to have them in 3042. So in 2022, and that was a surprise, we have recorded 180% uh, of the objectives set. Today we have 13,500 uh, electric vehicles. And of course, this objective must go on and we want to achieve this objective every year. So what did we do for that? As you know, in 2020, we passed for the first time uh, in Greece the law on electromobility. In this law, we set a um, set of incentives, tax incentives for the companies to turn themselves to electromobility. And then we created special programs. You might have heard the program I move uh, with electromobility. In the previous program, where we had a budget of 100 million, it is true that the electric bike was the one that uh, upstaged the bride. But this is a positive sign for Greece, because Greeks are not used to go on a bike and use them to go around just and not just for entertainment and uh, leisure. So, the previous program has been ended. 
since we had the two years of the pandemic, one might think that it went quite well. People embraced electromobility, and we have seen various um, applications coming to the ministry's platform. And in the coming days, we will have the second cycle of uh, I move around uh, with electromobility with increased incentives. In the previous cycle, we gave a, a subsidy of 20% up to 6,000 euros. In the new program, we have increased the percentage to 30 percent, percentage of the subsidy, that is up to 8,000 euros. We have provided more incentives for the young people to turn themselves to electromobility and more incentives for uh, the businesses on the islands. The next program that we are preparing is the so-called uh, Green Taxes program aiming at uh, replacing conventional taxes in our cities. We have a budget of 40 million and we want to have at least uh, 2,000 new taxes instead of the conventional ones and polluting ones. And we go now to the program of uh, charging infrastructure because without charging infrastructure it is pointless. As I said, we have today 1,300 publicly accessible chargers, charging points. Clearly, this is not a satisfying number. But if you think that we started with 50 in 2019 and we have reached 1,300 today, okay, it is a positive step, but we still have a long way ahead. We asked uh, Jaspers to draft a uh, study and to tell us what are the needs based on the objectives that we said in the climate law. The study showed that we will need approximately 13,000 uh, publicly accessible charges by 2025 and they also said in this study that this figure must exceed 100,000 in 2030. We're talking about big figures here. Very difficult objective and it will require a lot of work and a very specific framework. For all those charges, it has been calculated that we would need investments exceeding 700 uh, million in the coming years. Right now, we have as a budget approximately 80 million from the RRF, which clearly is not, uh, is not enough. It is a beginning. We are planning uh, from the RRF and this 80 million, we are planning a program which is called I Charge Everywhere. This is a program addressed to the private sector, to the businesses, that is the companies which are active in provision of charging services. We want to, to tender this program in the third quarter of 2022. There are approximately 20 companies from the private sector which are active in this uh, provision of uh, charging services. Now, the problem lies, since we're talking about infrastructure, lies in the need to have publicly uh, located and installed uh, charging services in public areas, that is, um, on street charging. Right now we have just 6% in uh, on street charging. 65% of uh, drivers do not have a parking space. We will uh, assist towards this direction, that is to install as many uh, public uh, charges. And this is why we have uh, funded all the municipalities of the country to draft the charging plans. Already 150 municipalities have delivered their uh, plans and out of those it seems that we have 7,000 uh, places that are cited. These are the charging plans. These uh, spaces are uh, entered in a GIS, a Geographic Information System, so we know where we need to place a charger in order not to waste time in licensing later. And we are working in the Ministry on this model that we will use to develop this activity. That is, we are uh, drafting a tender document 
for the municipalities and what else do we do? And I will conclude with that. In the climate law, we have set ourselves another uh, ambitious objective. We said that from 2026 onwards, all new taxes in Thessalonica must be uh, must have zero emissions. We asked uh, the body responsible to tell us what are the parking uh, spaces for taxis in Athens. There are uh, many such spaces, and we have made 165 uh, parking and stopping uh, places to see where we could have um, speedy chargers. So we have the first list with the 35 taxi uh, stations which have been uh, deemed as appropriate and then we will uh, see what model we will use in order to place uh, the speedy charges in these uh, taxi stations. At the same time we work with line ministries, transport development and shipping um, ministry on the national plan on electromobility which will provide a holistic plan as to how we will uh, manage to have electromobility on all modes of transport by determining objectives, uh, directions, uh, incentives, etc. And I will conclude with another program from the RRF again. You know, all this that we're discussing is pointless in Greece if we do not manage to create a productive basis around electromobility. That is to be able to create jobs, new jobs, and a uh, small, maybe maybe bigger, uh, growth model on electromobility. So we are uh, planning the Produce Green program. It is a 200 million worth of pro program. It provides for uh, incentives and subsidies to create production units for products and goods around this um, electromobility uh, chain. We want electromobility, apart from environmental, uh, the environmental benefits, to become a growth tool that will develop not just around the selling of cars, but will also create conditions of competitiveness of Greece through the production. Together with the objectives, of course, we have set in the National Plan for Energy and Climate, which is the penetration of RES, storage of energy, digital technologies, the new technologies around energy. All these are uh, spearhead sectors that will create new jobs. I think that all of us, when we travel abroad, we see pictures that we are envious of. We go to the Netherlands, to France, to the Nordic countries. Uh, we take uh, electric bikes, etc. Cities that have already introduced a more green uh, model of transportation. I can assure you that we have the plan and we have the obstinance and the will and the energy to improve the quality of life for all of us in the urban environment. Thank you very much. With Hungary, Zandulu, and Zandulu, and now the floor goes to Mr. Lemkes, the Stop, the Secretary General of Judicial Governance, and Simplification of Procedures, the Ministry of Judicial Governance. I, my, my talk is going to be approximately 10 minutes. I'd like to start by thanking Mr. Skalkos, the Secretary General of Investment, and Deputy uh, uh, Minister Sakiris, Mr. Zervos, Mr. Andoru, the Secretary General, for the excellent collaboration we've had all, all this time in order for, to have uh, the digital transformation program approved next week, a program that did not exist in the pro previous program period, and I believe that it will be a key tool for the digital transformation of the country. I thank them for the collaboration. I'd like to thank 
the officers of the various services, especially our service, with whom we may quarrel day and night, but the work we've done is excellent and the reason to the expectations. Ladies and gentlemen, three years ago, as you all know, we embarked on a travel, all of us, for the fast uh, inclusion of the country new digital era, knowing uh, the problems and the ailments that existed, the constraints and difficult challenges. We knew very well that uh, the digital transformation to come true, there had to be a cohesive uh, government plan and to make uh, fast and bold decisions early 2018, the annual conference of uh, the CIT Communist Conference, the Prime Minister had outlined the four uh, the six pillars upon which uh, the transformation of the country would rely, as well as uh, determine governance. This is uh, proof of uh, the existence of a plan that uh, existed back then, and that digital transformation was not the outcome of uh, the circumstances or the pandemic, but the planning pre-existed and was uh, simply enabled by, uh, facilitated by pandemic. So a new administrative ecosystem for digital transformation was set up, new methodology, work with the job for uh, governance and uh, we all included our innovative thinking for all this to come true in three years. If somebody thinks back, they would uh, realize that a lot of major steps have been taken in summer 29. We had the new administrative system and the digital governance uh, um, legislation was enacted regarding uh, the digital uh, the digital signature. We also we also have the digital bible paper for the current financing tools instruments. Before the pandemic, uh, we had uh, the activation of one one two, but after the lockdown. The single digital uh, portal was launched. We uh, got resources. We exit the blacklist of the US for pirate software. We were delisted from that list. Then we voted uh, the digital governance code that digitized all uh, reg regulations and we incorporated the digital uh, cloud uh, in the law. Hence, uh, Microsoft and Amazon proceeded to their investments in Greece because they realized there was real political will. In December 2020, we completed the 5G auction with uh, 372 million uh, revenues for the state. We will all agree that the trouble that uh, started back in 2019 makes all pr happy and proud as Greeks. And uh, the effort and priority of everyone uh, yielded this uh, result and is important. And it makes sense, rather, for digital transformation to take priority because it changes all aspects of our life and we live in a society of data. Big data, according to the European Union estimates by 2025, uh, the value of data will rise to 830 billion from uh, 350 billion back in 2018. Now, the question is to what extent the, trans the transformation could be a development, a growth lever, and to respond to this, we need to define what development is. For us, uh, development, as the Vice President said, is a functional state. The functional state for us is a simple and digital state. The, being the largest organization, it is responsible for two things regarding development. First, obviously, not to raise uh, obstacles with procedures that it enacts and absorbing valuable resources from the economy. Uh, requiring only what is necessary for the public interest. It has been estimated that Greece has got the highest rate of red tape 
to ratio of red tape to uh, GDP. So red tape uh, procedures absorb a large part of resources from the market that would have been directed to productive work. As early as 2012, with the um, the then uh, Minister of uh, Public Ad Administration, uh, currently Prime Minister, we managed to make, make a lot of uh, reforms without even uh, moving into digital transformation. So imagine these uh, 566 uh, digital um, transactions mean less visits in person to public services, hence reduction in the administrative burden to the economy. Secondly, it increases uh, the key resource of trust, digital transformation through transparency and easy access and unbidded access, uh, allowing um, information for everyone. This has to do with the substantial change in the mindset and attitudes to the state in order for business ideas to bloom and have uh, sound entrepreneurship. And digital transformation gives this uh, advantage as impersonal transactions uh, make uh, administration more transparent, more accessible, changing people's perception of the state. This is it is has been proved through ACT surveys that the citizen the improved citizen perception of uh, public administration increase the trust in the institution which is required for the economy this is for the economy and when there is increase in the trust is also uh, show demonstrated by other surveys uh, and studies such as uh, the SEPA survey at the end of 21 which showed that uh, the people's perception of digital transformation uh, is above 60 percent across all the indicators and when it comes to public digital uh, procedures and digital infrastructure 93 percent of the of the respondents said that they were uh, quite or very satisfied with the digital services according to the digital um, observatory of sev greece uh, increased uh, uh, or rather gained three places so and we are also quite successful in the OECD uh, indicator regarding people's trust in state. Uh, currently, we've scored we've scored quite we're scoring quite high. Development comes from an economic mature, mature economy. Both the market and our society are taking uh, steps ahead. And as I said in the beginning, the digital transformation transforms everything the way we. I uh, perceive the world, our openness to the world, uh, the accessibility we have, all these structural uh, blocks of development. And we need to have two things dynamic IT, ICT market, and uh, digitally literate uh, people and uh, workers. When it comes to the first, the, la the former, the ICT market will contribute to the growth. I'll give you some examples that were shown during the SEPE conference at the end of 2021 regarding the contribution of ICT to the economy. More specifically, the uh, ICT can contribute added value of uh, 50 billion by 2024 and 500,000 new jobs by again by 2024. Um, additionally, this uh, sector can exceed in value 8.7 billion euro in 2022 through the utilization of funds of the RRF uh, and uh, PA funds. This is a major, uh, an amount much higher than the estimates back in 2019, which has uh, made it that uh, to 6.9 billion. And according to the updated uh, study that uh, was uh, uh, presented at the SEPE, the ICT sector uh, grew faster um, by 4.4% versus 22 uh, globally. Similar to the conclusions of other studies that, is that the National Documentation Center, which is um, a, an official uh, authority, and that uh, said that 82% of the Greek businesses focus on uh, digitalization as a key uh, growth uh, lever f for the private economy. Of course, we should all place emphasis, as the Vice President said earlier, on the uh, training of people 
and uh, digital accessibility for everyone so that nobody is left behind. Here, uh, next to the initiatives that have been taken for digital skills and digital academy for citizens, uh, digital academy, uh, then the PA and RRF uh, resources will be very helpful as well as the third pillar of digital transformation which is dedicated to digital skills of employees in both public and private sectors. This is the challenge for the next program period so that by 2030 there will be no citizen left behind. I would like to conclude by saying, ladies and gentlemen, the digital future is not distant, it's already here. We have got the tools, the PA, the um, RRF that uh, enable us to touch this future. In the three previous year, a lot of uh, major projects, especially for the public sector, such as the ERP for the ERP for public finance management, the HRMS for the HR management, the uh, national codif codification portal, the projects that had um, were idle for many years have, are currently underway. The same uh, is true for the new project, the project, the new Diabia, and we will go on just as fast. And the new financing uh, instruments, uh, financial instruments, will allow us to do so. The new operational program, digital transformation operational program, as has been uh, submitted and expected to be approved next week by the European Commission, will be a valuable pillar for the implementation of our plan. And with these few thoughts and this um, data, I'm going to conclude by saying that the digital transformation is not just a growth lever, it is a condition for the survival of the country and the society. Thank you very much. The technological uh, developments uh, go very fast. Uh, the Secretary General was also very fast, so from digital infrastructure as a driver for growth, we will see whether, uh, we'll see with Mr. Zilaskopoulos, who is a professor of transport and production at the University of Thessaly, we will ask him to tell us whether we have a comparative edge uh, in multimodal transport and logistics. Well, first of all, it is a great honor and a privilege to be here in this so important uh, landmark conference and I would like to thank Mr. Skalkos for the invitation and you Mrs. Makadasi for your uh, patience. I will talk about the strategy of the National uh, Council for Growth and Competitiveness where I preside and the effort to have our country participate in global supply chains. It is a topic that we have discussed uh, many times in the past. If we don't do it very fast, it will exceed us. This is the first objective. The first objective in the national strategy for uh, supply chain is to make Greece a transit hub for supply chains and at the same time a hub for uh, manufacturing for the broader area. This is an objective which started uh, two days, two years ago uh, when I was the president in Trenose. We started an ambitious plan to unite the Piraeus port to the center of Europe by serving the global uh, supply chains. It was very ambitious. We drafted a strategy together with Costco. It was partly implemented. In 2015, we managed to send 1,000 trains with goods to Central Europe, mainly uh, electronically. The plan was to make these uh, 1,000 trains, to make them 20,000. And many of the uh, goods to have a value added in Greece. We remain behind. Unfortunately, today we're talking about only 1,000 trains. There is an effort undertaken, although things have changed after the pandemic. 
Moreover, the neighboring countries have moved uh, very aggressively in this sector and have uh, claimed industries and supply chains, etc. But they constitute one of the objectives uh, which is a vision for us. The second objective for the logistics is and this was obvious when we tried to implement the first, is that we need to have effective national logistics. If we cannot move the projects uh, around effectively to reduce the cost of transportation, management, etc., we cannot approach multinationals to convince them to use Greece. Just let me give you a figure. Logistics in Greece is approximately 9 to 10 percent of the GDP. It is not a uh, unimportant economic activity. Any product, any good that is uh, sold and bought must move around. This is a cost that we all uh, carry. We shoulder this cost. If we do not have effective logistics, we pay for that on the supermarket shelf. So, we need to examine this issue and see how we can improve it. Of course, to tell you the other two objectives, that is the sustainable logistics, that is green logistics and green supply chain are very important. Ms. Zuku mentioned the issue of electromobility. We have talked uh, as a council with Mrs. Zuku to see to what extent the urban transportation could um, enhance the initiatives of the General Secretariat. It is a complex issue and it entails changes in the supply uh, lines. We, it requires a lot of infrastructure. Uh, a lot of structures. And finally, digital transformation. I think Mr. Christopoulos uh, was very eloquent on that. It is absolutely necessary. No business can survive without that. But there again, we have actions that we promote very fast because time is lying behind. One cross cutting action is the institutional framework. We are updating the law of 2014. 4382, and we see that many of the forecasts have been um, outdated. We need to further simplify the licensing procedures. We need to facilitate the life of the transit uh, cargo by simplifying the actions. There is an action from the Ministry of Shipping by about the port community system, which is included in this uh, procedure. And of course, it entails other organizational issues. Another horizontal action is it pertains to the whole uh, logistics um, chain, the supply chain pertains to um, uh, merchandise centers. Today, Bulgaria has three, Czech Republic has 17, uh, Triasio Ena is already underway. The contractor goes on for with the implementation of the project, and we have uh, had one or two significant actions. As president of the Taipev, from the RRF, we finance the relocation of Eleonas, which will settle an issue that has been uh, stagnating for years, this whole area of Eleonas. All these businesses will be relocated to an organized recipient with uh, railway infrastructure, connection to the road uh, network. We 
anticipate that 4,000 cars will leave Kifisos area and will go very uh, fast to this uh, center, the recipient center, through Atikiodos. I will go on directly to the next uh, slide. The consolidation of existing uh, installations of the supply chain. There are uh, chaotic installations. There is an action, and we will use a PA funding to settle this issue. Ports, railways, trans-European networks. Right now, this is the weak link, unfortunately. The ports, uh, I mean the railway, the ports are uh, in operation. We have huge uh, cargoes that uh, reach the ports, but which cannot go through the country. The port requires the railway, and this is way where we need to... Uh, be more, um, we need to, to examine this issue. Digitalization of the uh, Greek supply chain. Two things. One is the digitization of all uh, documents. Right now, we have bills of laden uh, and other documents which are on a which are printed. We need to have a picture. We have. We need to have an electronic form of all this to have the picture. What are the freights that are moving around in Greece? In Greece, before ex exhausting and going to electromobility and other uh, environment-friendly fuels, we have to see how we can reduce what we call the empty kilometers or the kilometers that are spent on the road in traffic jams, uh, polluting the environment, emitting uh, pollutants. We need to see how we can make logistics more effective and how we can have um, actions with fuels that are environment friendly. An issue that is faced by Greek transportation is that there is a distortion created for many years now. We try to resolve it. There are uh, public uh, use lorries that need to be replaced. We are trying to face this problem to see how this fleet can be renewed to have structures that can be more efficient so that they can exploit the rolling stock that they have. I will say nothing about funding. I think this is a PA conference, so all the previous speakers have said everything about it. The only thing to say is that we need to think more creatively here. There are some pathogenicities, and we would like to take some steps to resolve. For instance, outsourcing. Outsourcing is when a business company, a commercial company, outsources, gives the warehousing and logistics to another professional. In Europe, it is 80%. 80% of these companies give to professionals uh, of the field this activity. In Greece, we have just 20%. So there is a problem here, and we can face it uh, financially. Finally, as a professor, I have to say a few words about education and human resources. We need constantly new skills. We I think the new Bill of Law, which is under uh, consultation, helps towards this direction. That is to create even new specializations, something that the Greek university finds very difficult to do. We are most probably the only country that does not have a pre-graduate uh, diploma in logistics. In all the other countries, there are many programs. 
We have some postgraduate, but we need to have a more uh, flexible educational system in order to do that. And finally, research on logistics. There is an effort undertaken with the General Secretariat on uh, Research and Technology for technical projects for the development of the supply chain. I think we are on the, on the right path with actions for the logistics, and I think this will be of great help towards this direction. And with this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you. And now, Mr. Panagitis Papadopoulou, Assistant Professor, Department of Transportation Planning at the University of Western Attica, who talks to us about challenges and perspectives for road safety in Greece. Thank you very much. I thank the organizers for inviting me to this uh, conference here in Kalamata, as well as the uh, Association of uh, Transport Engineers, who have, uh, of which I've been a, a member uh, that has been dealing with issues including road safety and road safety is uh, has to be part of the agenda of a pro of a program like a PA, the things have to be improved, and uh, I'll try and be as brief as possible. I'd like to map the situation, giving some uh, data and also some proposals, actions that need to be taken on board in Greece at national level as well as uh, regional and municipal levels. Now, Having been through the pandemic recently, years, we should not forget that uh, road uh, safety or rather road accidents are also a pandemic. More than uh, 1.3 million people lose their lives uh, in the street, in the roads, on the roads. Approximately uh, 600 in Greece annually. But uh, in no modern European country should uh, settle for such numbers. Things should be improved. Again, we see a review of the situation at European level. In 2010, the first target was set at the European level for road accident fatalities to be reduced by 50 percent from 2010 to 2020. Greece is the only country who managed to achieve this target. Uh, Europe wide. The, this, this rate was 36%, is 36%. Greece, of course, started very low, was among the three countries with the worst indicators, managed to achieve 50% improvement in the past 10 years, thanks to various factors, including new highways, the financial crisis, which reduced transport. But Nonetheless, it's still a major improvement. Here we see various data that can be discussed. Major problem in Greece, you see the Greek uh, flag is on the right-hand side in, uh, when it comes to the cycles, uh, motorcycles. There's a high number of uh, accidents involved with the involvement of motorcycles, thanks to the weather conditions, of course, when we have a due to which we have got a lot of uh, motorcyclists. So there's a major improvement for Greece when the fleet has remained almost uh, stable during the economic crisis and has uh, increased in recent years. You see this in Athens, in Attica, with the major traffic congestions. This slide hasn't changed at all in the past 50 years. These are the key reasons why fatalities are caused, or fatalities, and we exclude the cellular phone, which is rather uh, recent. Uh, all the others have been there for many years, and this is where we should uh, focus. Uh, speeding, high numbers of motorcyclists, 
low percentages of uh, helmet and uh, safety belt use and uh, drinking and driving, something that we should improve in our country. And five uh, action pillars that we should uh, incorporate or take on board at the country level as well as regional levels and be included in the agenda of every uh, program that is uh, user behavior, infrastructure, vehicles, plus uh, road safety management, for which I'm going to talk later, and uh, management after the accident. Key, five key pillars where we should invest. And of course, this presentation will be available for you to download regarding the road user behavior, one of the key factors leading to fatalities. We said to improve the use of uh, safety belts and helmets, place emphasis on uh, vulnerable road users, get training, improve the training and uh, awareness raising campaigns regarding road infrastructure, which is part of the PA. A large amount will be dedicated to the improvement of road infrastructures. Uh, road infrastructure. Actually, we have an excellent uh, network, highway network, but a very poor rural road network and a lot of dangerous uh, parts of the network that need to be improved. Third category vehicles. Here technology is our ally. New vehicles have got excellent uh, passive safety and active safety systems. And because of the financial crisis the past decade, we've got uh, a very low turnover of the fleet. Uh, when all other European countries uh, uh, have increasingly more modern vehicles in Greece, uh, the number is very low, so we need a lot of incentives you know, for the role of the vehicles to change and be improved, as well as technical inspections to be intensified. Regarding the road safety management, you may have heard recently that there will be a road safety fund, something very important. The money collected uh, from uh, road uh, safety fines will, should be invested in road safety. Uh, this will help improve the situation. Also, management after the accident is the key parameter that needs to be improved, especially when it comes to the time it takes. And I would like to conclude by saying, sharing some proposals, for instance, a new road safety law that uh, will arise from the strategic plan that is being uh, de developed currently, systematic uh, surveillance, uh, policing, this because this is the key measure in order to improve the indicators. Monitoring of the actions equally important on so take measures, but we also need to monitor and evaluate the measures that we take and see whether they are effective and efficient. Of course, technology, that it should be an ally not only for vehicles, but also through telematics in order to improve uh, road behavior. Now, the strategic plan that is being developed uh, by the National Technical University, just that Europe has got its targets to, uh, for 20 to, uh, 2030. Uh, in Greece, we have got a new target set for another decrease by 50% of uh, road fatalities. And there's a discussion, debate on whether this should be part of a law and be the foundation for the road ac uh, safety actions in our country. I would like to conclude by relating uh, PA, associating rather PA with the road safety. This is a priority five, where there are two actions uh, regarding uh, associated with uh, road safety. First, uh, the construction improvement of the road network, and the second has to do with road safety interventions, uh, improvement interventions. Uh, well, this will amount to several billion euro and of course it will be a key tool for the forthcoming uh, years. And I would like to conclude by saying that uh, uh, traffic, uh, traffic engineers will always help in the improvement of the situation. Thank you very much.
Ευχαριστούμε και εμείς κύριε Παπαντονίου. Thank you, Mr. Papandonio. Now, Mrs. Hadzi Petru, CEO and President of the Board of Directors of the Hellenic Development Bank, will talk about the ESG criteria and public infrastructure, how um, development banks can uh, contribute to the promotion of this criteria, and how public infrastructure contribute to the development uh, to the achievement of um, sustainable development goals. Good afternoon. We have asked for a video to be in a more dynamic mood. Good afternoon. It is a great honor and a great privilege because we are as the Hellenic Development Bank in a PA conference on growth and we have uh, we are very proud to have contributed to the development of the PA having disbursed more than 2 billion. We received the bank with 280 million under management and now we have more than uh, 8 billion uh, loans disbursed and this is a great satisfaction as regards the implementation of our vision and our mission as it was explained by Mr. Zodzakis, the Vice President, a while ago. So, having got the mission to facilitate the access of businesses to financing, we are now responsible to continue the successful uh, path. In the Hellenic Development Bank, we support those who dare, those who innovate. We have as a shareholder the public sector, the Greek government, and we are the main uh, driver which creates a multiplier effect. However, the impact uh, in the market is more than linear. We have contributed to the increase of jobs having as a clause in one of our products for the maintaining of uh, jobs. However, the support was not for the 18,000 uh, jobs that were retained. We are talking about more than um, more than 238,000 jobs that were kept with loans and with disbursements that reach 8.3 billion. The business model that we share, I share with you now, is very important, and um, it must be understood by all, not just because uh, of the left-hand part the tools that we have and the money that we leverage, but for the right hand part. We are a society, a country, which has in its mind that both co-funded uh, resources and national resources must be channeled to subsidies. However, 
caution is needed here. Through the financial instruments, and I'm giving you an example of how we operate today, we got a funding from the Greek state of uh, 3.6 billion. With this 3.6 uh, billion, we bring to the market 11.1 billion. We leverage uh, loans, and with the hypothesis that 15% will be lost, we return as national resources 3 billion. This is the main difference with uh, subsidies. Loans are refunded, and after four to five years, the country will find itself in the position to create new tools with these three billion. And this is very important. This is how the greatest part of Europe is operating, and this is how we should operate from now on if we want to multiply the money, even when, for some reason, the European support will be uh, reduced. So this is for us the vision of uh, creation of value. This is how the creation of value be is measurable, with a model of input which is more than uh, funds. It is the human resources of uh, the development bank and the know-how. We implement the vision and the strategy. We do not just record it with values such as efficiency, responsibility, transparency, respect, Sustainable development, which includes social uh, corporate governance, uh, it includes innovation, digital transformation, and reinforcement of local societies. And this is how we create our financial instruments, which are loans, guarantees, and subsidies. The result of this dynamics has something very important, not just financial output, but it has an impact on the social capital. The capital under management, as I showed you before, with 3.1 billion, we created uh, 9.2 billion. The most important thing is that these tools are uh, guarantee uh, tools and co-funding tools. We have the Fund of Western Macedonia, a very successful, very small program with Mr. Kasapidis, which has helped the Society of Western Macedonia and it was the first time that the Hellenic Development Bank created the product. We also have products with the private sector. For us, the important thing is the leverage uh, coefficient. And the second is that we have a very small uh, time uh, to market, less than three months. So the agenda of sustainability is incorporated in today. The ESG criteria as a comparative advantage are issued in the product today, in the product uh, of innovation with Mr. Jodakis, to award the, the to supervise and um, award the objectives. 50% uh, in the bank responsibility positions are uh, women and 30% belong to the millennial generation. However, this conviction is more uh, strong for tomorrow. Through our contribution to face uh, environmental challenges and with new financial instruments, with green and sustainable targeting, develop, uh, education of uh, human resources and evaluation of the ESG criteria. This is how we mark the HDB 2.0 next generation. Mr. Schinas said before that our objective, the objective of Europe, is to have, to give a possibility for uh, funding though to those who are not in the system now. And this is what we have promised, this is what we have pledged, and we have committed ourselves. So, reinforcement of bankability, bankability of human, of Greek enterprises, expansion of credit, and we do this with a new tool, which is called Know the Customer, with uh, ESG, eligibility, HB eligibility, ESG eligibility and with the project funding. I will go a bit faster now to the opportunities that we have through such a platform. As it was mentioned before, the objective is to include more and more enterprises, as many as possible. So we change 
the mechanic that uh, we have a reverse engineering and the applications will come to this platform. We will have a sort of um, clearing of on-off criteria, tax certificates, etc. And then we will offer to the whole, to all the banking system, the businesses which will want to be involved in such products and the, their uh, data will be available to all the banks so as to have greater uh, competitiveness and better competitiveness in the banking sector. So this alternative propos proposal, we want to ensure that there will be uh, speed, transparency, better competition conditions and that we will be able to include in this platform ESG criteria, something that very small enterprises, which are the backbone of the Greek economy, do not have and cannot have, at least not as easy as the others can have. So for the first time in the Greek public sector, we will have a database which is lacking, maybe it is lacking in the, from the private uh, credit sector, and we will have the opportunity to make a processing uh, and see why some companies are considered not bankable. So transparency as part of, of doing business, market forces as part of competitiveness. What else do we see? I will go a bit faster because time has elapsed. We see the future as a lever for uh, infrastructure projects and the ecosystem that they create because this need will become even more intense in the coming years because we believe that the percentage of development banks must increase and we must better uh, enhance their multiplier effect because this need is recorded in the report of WWF that there is an investment gap of climate uh, neutrality where we, need, we see a need of better utilization of more resources because the investment in infrastructures have greater um, advantages dissemination of risk, uh, higher yield, uh, negative uh, correlation to inflation. Of course, they have, some, they have some difficulties in their implementation. We will do that because we want to accelerate the framework for financing infrastructure projects, especially as regards the um, viable, the sustainable projects, to contribute to projects with powerful multipliers to use the limited resources of HDB to assist uh, technical uh, assistance and monitoring the project and to fund projects on all levels of uh, local government, local uh, and national. Finally, we're interested in the framework of operation of infrastructure projects. We want to have uh, models of banking uh, efficiency and a culture of constant improvement and responsibility on each stage. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ms. Petro. Last but not least, as we say, Mr. Carsten Rasmussen, Head of Unit, Cyprus and Greece, DG Regio of European Union Commission. Have we got him with us? Yes, he is there on Monto. Digitally. No. Thank you, Mr. Thank you Rasmussen. Very much. The, the floor is yours. You are giving me a very difficult task. Uh, we are intervening after the closure speech, and I am the last speaker. I would expect you all to have left by the time I finished my intervention. Uh, let's see. Infrastructure is in the DNA of both the ERDF and the Cohesion Fund. This is what we're used to doing, and this is also what is necessary. There can be no uh, smart cities without infrastructure investments in broadband. Uh, there can be no Greco islands without investments in ports, without investments in e-charging infrastructure. Uh, let me say to Alexandra Stuko that if we need to find funding for e 
charging under uh, ISPA, I am sure that we will be able to do that uh, in complementarity to what uh, our friends from the RRF are doing. There can be no health service without investments in hospitals. So wherever we go, infrastructure is necessary and will continue to be necessary. Of course, the focus and the scope of the infrastructure in the new ISPA, if we compare it to previous generations, the 1420 or the 713 program has changed. It has changed with the necessity to green the economy and with the necessity to digitalize the, the economy. Uh, two themes that were very forcefully underlined by uh, our commissioner this morning. COVID and the whole epidemia situation has shown us the importance of digital and we are very happy that this time around we have a digital uh, program. Uh, it follows a digital Bible, so we, we, we have a rather clear path uh, and we are quite confident that we will be successful with rolling out these investments together uh, with the new ministry. In energy, uh, we will continue to make sizable investments in energy efficiency. This is also an important part in, in, in our common attempt to reduce energy consumption. Um, and we will have some investments also for renewable energy, although in this sector we, of course, rely on private investments as they are being enabled by the Ministry of uh, Environment and Transport. But we will have some uh, strategic investments in energy uh, com communities, uh, which is particularly relevant in, in rural and remote areas, as it will be the case of the, the Great Islands. The transport sector is logically affected by this. So the transport investments are going down by uh, as much as 34% over the previous period. So a significant reduction, which we can explain by two factors. One is that we are finishing the 10T network on roads. It is, we should be proud of that. Greece should be proud of that. Uh, over the last uh, 25 years, you have managed to build a solid backbone of 10T uh, roads uh, that are well maintained uh, according to the highest international standards. It is one of our common success stories. So when we continue to invest in roads, it is in the missing link in Boac, uh, in Crete, and it is in road safety. And further to what the previous speaker was saying about road safety, I'm extre extremely happy that uh, we will not only invest in road safety from the angle of doing a physical upgrade of certain roads. We will also consider the other features that you mentioned, uh, policing, uh, behavior, uh, the, uh, the speed reduction. That is, is one uh, key element of, uh, of the way too high uh, fatality figures that, that we need to bring down. But inside the transport uh, sector as well, uh, we are operating a significant greening. So further to what we have traditionally done, the uh, successful investments in the metro and tram in Attica, the metro investment in Thessaloniki, not yet quite successful, but hopefully uh, soon up and running. Um, we will now add, and I, I said it already this morning, we consider that a key achievement. We will add uh, at least 100 million to boost public urban transport also in a number of towns and cities outside of Attica and Thessaloniki. Public urban transport is by us considered a game changer. This is something all European countries have with the relative exception of Cyprus, Malta, and Greece, and we uh, do believe that what others have, Greece should have, and Greece should have it in a quality that is top-notch and not uh, in a quality that is barely uh, good enough. Behind every initiative we have in this period, we need to put a level of ambition that is the highest possible. Uh, there is no alternative to leave frogging. We simply have to make sure that uh, our European taxpayers from wherever they come uh, will turn up in Greece and admire our investors. That is the overall target. Uh, nothing less is acceptable, acceptable. And that, of course, puts a lot of pressure on us to convert our, uh, our projects. 
So beyond the greening of auto transport with public urban transport, e-mobility, of course, being a game changer also for public urban transport, it allows us to, to put uh, silent and emission-free buses where before we could not easily put tramways because the entry costs were too high. Uh, beyond this, uh, it is also time to step up the level of ambition in terms of the configuration of our projects and in terms of the selection of our projects. Selecting the right projects is important because we have collectively, and not only in Greece, in the past occasionally financed one or the other white elephant. We have financed projects that were not strictly speaking necessary. We have financed too many wastewater treatment plants when uh, people could have joined efforts and several municipalities could have shared one wastewater treatment plant. So some of our investments are too small. Uh, so there is a need to put additional pressure on beneficiaries. And this is the job of the managing authorities to do the necessary filtering to make sure that nothing goes through the, uh, the needle eye in terms of eligibility that is not duly justified. Secondly, we need to ensure that projects are viable. Uh, we are a policy that has too long focused on the CAPEX side of investments. Uh, we were happy to, to put the available funding up in order to build the infrastructure, but we have not, and again, collectively, together, we have not always sufficiently considered if the investments were viable. And here I would, uh, I mean, I would totally agree to the perspective outlined by the Greek, uh, by the uh, Hellenic Development Bank. This is something that is a, that should be natural in whatever we do. We do not finance things that are not there in 15 or 20 years that are not sustainable. This is particularly a feature that is important when we speak about very investment heavy sectors like uh, environmental infrastructure, waste infrastructure, water infrastructure. We need to have the necessary tariffs, uh, the, the right tariff policies to make sure that the, the funding comes in to maintain these systems and also to renew them as it becomes necessary over the typical sort of 30 year lifespan that we have for such projects. It's also important for sectors like health. Uh, it is attractive, politically attractive, seductive to finance a new hospital. But a new hospital is very expensive. It needs to be run. It requires resources. It requires equipment. And once again, we need to ask ourselves whether the, uh, the owners, the, the, those that are responsible for, for these hospitals have the necessary funding and the necessary uh, expertise to, to be able to maintain and to renew the investments. So this is a, a paradigm shift that we will gradually operate uh, throughout the programs because uh, this perspective is relevant wherever we go. It is relevant for each and every, uh, and every investment. Is this investment needed and is it a viable investment? Um, we are extremely happy with the attitude that has been deployed by the Greek uh, administration and government during the negotiations. There has been no denial of the fact that in the past we have made mistakes and there has been a genuine commitment to start doing something about it. Now, we on our side are fully aware that there is no quick fix to such situations. It takes an awful lot of analysis. It takes beyond the political commitment. It also takes the necessary skills. It takes procedures. It takes in certain areas, a new cultural behavior uh, for uh, for managing authorities to be able to be that filter, uh, that quality filter for investments. Uh, we will be patient and we will together also invest in administrative capacity. It is important that we keep the administrative capacity, the knowledge, the know-how of our managing authorities and the intermediate bodies up to the highest standards, that we keep renewing our system, bringing in new skills. And it is equally important that we start systematically supporting our beneficiaries, be they or see, ergo see. Some of those that we have continuously criticized in the past for not being quick enough, not being uh, diligent enough. Well, if we want them to do better, we should be ready to finance them. The same goes for municipalities. One of the very slow performances we've had in the 1420 period there's a reason for that, and one of the one of the or many reasons. One of the reasons is that typically 
the uh, the municipalities do not uh, dispose of the necessary staff or the necessary expertise to uh, to do this. So the mixture of a focus shift, the mixture of the availability of new technologies that allow to do with less funding what we could not easily do before, be it uh, electrobuses or um, desalinization uh, powered by renewable energy, together with a, an increased awareness of the need to finance also financially and technically and organizationally sustainable projects, will be uh, the key change that will ensure that our common performance in the 21-27 period will be strong and will be significantly better than uh, what uh, we have seen in the past periods. So we are satisfied uh, with the result of the negotiation. It puts the funding where it needs to go. It greens, it digitalizes, but it also sets aside funding to help uh, build administrative capacity where we need to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, we are grateful to have you with us and uh, sorry for the apologies for the delay. Uh, I think it's the time to close. There will, there will be no questions uh, because we have uh, tied you out uh, enough today, but we do wish to tell you that we understood how these funds will become seeds that will have a multiplying effect. Since we are uh, hosted here in Kalamata, the person responsible to conclude this um, event today, because tomorrow morning we will meet at 9.30, so responsible for closing this event is the regional governor, Mr. Nikas. So, Mr. Nikas, please take the floor, sir. Thank you very much. I think we are all thankful for the excellent uh, interventions that we heard. They will help us to do our job because what is at stake is the final result. I will not disagree to any of the interventions, but I would like to share with you one or two things respecting your time. We, as the region of, the, of Peloponnese, through the Interreg program, we had a vehicle, and I am uh, referring to Mrs. Zduku intervention. We bought another 12 vehicles and we installed uh, chargers and the benefits are clear as regards the fuel. We find it much easier to move around. However, it is an expensive solution. Each vehicle costs at least 35,000 euros. I do not know how we can achieve the objective if the price of the vehicles is not reduced. We have a problem as regards the management of charges as a public agency. We do not know how to do that because uh, those who use the charges must pay. So we are trying to find a way. And we do not know why there is no support for the public sector, uh, the regions, for buying um, electric vehicles. The second point is that there is a care, a special care for Athens and Thessalonica, and there is no respective uh, care and uh, intervention for the big regional cities. The other day, we had a discussion with Mr. Xifaraz in the Ministry of Transport regarding the possibility to have 
the delivery of some uh, electric uh, buses in areas with uh, population, in the area of Argos Nafplio, where they have a lot of people, Corinthos Isthmos Lutraki and Kalamata Messini. I want to ask you to examine also the possibilities, uh, the potential for the regions to have electric vehicles. We will operate them together with the intercity buses, the CTEL, and to achieve the objective in the best possible way. We will not have uh, two agencies managing them. The third point is something very positive. You pinpointed that. In Megalopolis, with the great cooperation that we have, Mr. Papathanasis, this field of two th of uh, 200 uh, hectares that will be used for uh, industrial um, installations. The direction should be for the uh, production of uh, batteries. That will be very, very uh, positive because I think our direction and the government's direction is to retain Megalopolis as an energy field. Now, two or three things uh, regarding the excellent presentation of our uh, of Mr. Papandoniu. And I'm also uh, addressing Mr. Skalkos, who is also uh, originating in the Peloponnese. Despite the five uh, CRFs, our network is in a uh, dire situation, and the new PA has 30 million. Well, clearly we have accidents. When you have to go from Napoli to Porto Heli, a very touristic area, you still go on uh, taking two hours to get there. I will not dwell on how to go to Yithio or how to go to Patras through Corinth, because if we go through Pyrgos, we have to uh, go through hell. So how can we manage with 30 million euros and how Dimitris Kalkos can help us in this direction, that is to upgrade our node network. In your uh, presentation, Mr. Papandonio, I would like to add the following, if I may. I asked for a check of private uh, vehicle control uh, stations, the CTEO. You know that the control of vehicles has, uh, control of these uh, stations has stopped. You know what I have seen? All these uh, stations in our region, in the five prefectures, have very serious problems uh, pertaining to what is happened, to what is uh, provided for in the legislation. So let's examine the strategy. Let's examine uh, what we have achieved and not. And let's start having a very strict control of the vehicles because the vehicles are very old. I remember in the past everyone said that uh, accidents were due to the um, old age of uh, vehicles. And I would like to conclude by s speaking about the railway network. I will just say that 140 years ago a network was established. The European Union uh, gave us 80 million to develop it. We closed it due to the memoranda. But since we were asked to set up a three-member committee and start talking about it, I submitted to Mr. Skalkos. It is a very serious issue for the Peloponnese, for the industrial areas. It is a uh, request for reducing the cost, a very serious topic, and please take it into account. Trigupis, without the PA, without the financial capacities that we have today, constructed a network 140 years ago. We closed it down. It is an opportunity to examine it once more. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much.